Jeffrey Eugenides is a rarity in contemporary American fiction, a highly serious literary novelist whose books are also enormously popular. He's written just two novels. His first novel, The Virgin Suicides, was made into a much discussed film. His second novel, Middlesex, won the Pulitzer Prize and remains one of the best selling of all contemporary American novels. Jeffrey Eugenides visited The Times recently, and we talked about his fiction, the reissue of The Virgin Suicides, and also about his hometown, Detroit, which has undergone so much change in recent years. Jeffrey Eugenides, your first novel, The Virgin Suicides, has just been re-released. It was published in 1993, I believe. How does that novel look to you now? How does it look now? Well, it's, um, I like the cover, the new cover. <laughs> it looks good to me. I think it's kind of dangerous to go back to your old work and, and read it extensively because one of two things can happen. Either you're terribly impressed with your early work and you're not writing as well now, which would depress you, or you find that you actually weren't as good as you thought you were at the time. So I tried to keep a kind of healthy distance on it. So The Virgin Suicides is a remarkable fable, also a realistic depiction in its way of suburban life at a certain time. Who were you when you conceived that novel and wrote it? Um, who I was um, was a 33-year-old executive secretary at the Academy of American Poets. Um, writing that book at night for two hours every night on the weekends and often at work. And I was finally fired from the job for, for writing The Virgin Suicides uh, on the sly. I actually have a, a, a package of manuscript pages that, are, um, that bear the letterhead of the American Academy of American Poets because I would pretend to type a letter to, to John Ashbery or James Merrill <laughs> and I'd actually type scenes from the novel. So th that's who I was. I was a, a struggling first-time novelist. One interesting question that comes up with your work is, particularly in Middlesex, is you write a great deal about the immigrant experience. It's the Greek-American experience. How many literary forebears did you have writing in this country doing the kind of fiction that you wanted to write? Um, absolutely none in terms of Greek forebears. I think probably the influences on my work are Jewish writers, Bello and, and Philip Roth and, and, and writers like that, um, whose Experience always rang true to me, the, the idea of parents or grandparents um, from Europe, perhaps not so literate, working very hard to give their kids a, a chance in America. That, that all seemed very much like my own childhood. One character in both your first two novels, different though they are, is Detroit and its suburbs. Um, some have said you're the laureate of Detroit. Every time I go back to Detroit, it, you know, there's this, this German word, Ruinenlust, which is the pleasure of ruins. And there's, the concept is, is that you, you go to these places that are falling apart and, and they fill you with this kind of tragic sense of not just the place, but of, of life itself. And that's what, that's what comes over me when I go to Detroit. My whole childhood, the, the city was just falling apart little by little. Um, I was born in the city in 1960, and then the riots happened in 67, and then after that, just little by little you saw um, the city just getting shabbier and sort of crumbling. Now what's happened is that it's just vanishing in, in large swaths. They're bulldozing so much of the city. About 30 to 40 percent of it is now empty land. So that's what I notice when I, when I go there, is just my city and, and parts of it just being erased. Are you then still a Detroit writer? Is that where you will return for your inspiration and your stories? Uh, the way Roth has done with Newark? Or could you see yourself moving outward? Well, I, the only other place I've written about uh, extensively, not extensively, but a little bit, is Chicago, which is not such a different city than Detroit. I can understand Chicago immediately um, from having grown up in Detroit. If I move to San Francisco and California, I, I don't understand the society out there. I don't understand the, the people that live there and how, how the cogs work. So I don't think I would write about California. Um, I think I will return to Detroit in, in a lot of my books, but not, not only. I mean, Roth has his little bits of New York and his little bits of Chicago, and Bella wrote his New York novel. So I, you know, I, I, I'll give myself a little bit of wanderlust in my fiction. Middlesex reads like the work of quite different author in some respects from The Virgin Suicides. What are you working on now? Are we going to see another protean transformation? I, ho I hope so, actually. I'm, I've changed my work quite a bit since Middlesex. I think when you finish a book, um, 
especially one um, you've worked on a long time, you just want to get out of that atmosphere and, and that mode. So I've been moving toward an even more realistic, um, tightly dramatized kind of fiction. I've written, a f published a few stories in The New Yorker that are more uh, in this mode. Um, generally, my work has gone from a preoccupation with language, and I think The Virgin Suicides represents that, where it's really about the voice of the novel. Um, Middlesex was where I taught myself how to plot. It's extremely heavily overplotted novel the most. And, and now I'm working on deeper characterization, deeper psychological portraits of my characters. So that, that's the trajectory my work is going on. And um, what goes along with that, it seems, is a, is a kind of deepening realism. Well, you're the rare literary author who also has a devoted and large following. I'm sure our listeners and viewers would like to know when we might see this third novel. The new one. Oh, uh, well, um, my editor was also asking me that. It's, I'm supposed to finish in a couple of years from now, I think my contract says, but uh, I'm doing, doing my best. Thanks so much, Jeffrey Eugenides. Thank you.